reality. What? Today, I'd like to ponder the question, what are the kids' toys that stirred the most controversy? And some of these choices I found did raise some concerns at the time. Like when the FBI issued warnings about Barbie. Or sometimes, parents didn't know the toy's true purpose, while the users of the toys loved them. Possibly a little bit too much. So let's look back over the years of toys and check out the 10 most controversial toys. Kind of a follow-up to my most dangerous toys, I just really love making that one. Anyway, Anyway, let's begin. And starting with number 10, Black Canary Barbie. When I think of what Barbie would look like, I tend to imagine a tall, slim blonde lady. A woman nowadays of a lot of substance, beauty, and grace. But when Mattel released the Black Canary Barbie, many parents were concerned by it. Some parents thought she was an S&M inspired doll. Hey Google, what does S&M stand for? Oh, hmm. this is good to know. And as cool as I think her new getup looks, I can't understand the misunderstanding. But what is Black Canary? Well, Black Canary is a DC comic superhero. She is well known for her martial arts skills and canary cry. I really want to hear Barbie do a canary cry now. I mean, can you imagine a Black Widow Barbie? That actually sounds pretty cool. Barbie's dressed in Black Canary superhero getup, including a black skin-tight leotard, a leather jacket, fishnet tights, uh, biker gloves, and heel boots. And honestly, what could possibly be seen as inappropriate about Barbie wearing that? Amazon reviews to see her outfit being described as sexy or kinky. What the? Oh dear. She pretty unanimously gave the impression of an S&M doll. Personally, I just think she looks cool. I don't care what Barbie's into. There was another fairly noticeable problem too. Her one and only accessory was a display stand for collectors. But you see, it was designed as a straddle stand. It suspended Barbie from her crotch, looking, well, rather questionable and quite uncomfortable. Uh, Barbie, you just don't look too comfy there. Perhaps a stand that supported her back would have been better. Maybe not the crotch. Anyway, from this you can probably see why there wasn't much demand for buying Black Canary Barbie from parents. Maybe there was a teen boy demand? <laughs> but I don't think there was many parents wanting to buy it for their little girls. Although it was marketed to ages 14 and over, I, I think parents have a hard time seeing Barbie as anything other than a kid's toy. After a rapid decline in sales and interest, Black Canary Barbie was recalled and removed from shelves at the end of 2008. The poor thing didn't even manage to stay on shelves an entire year. In my opinion, it's a tough blow to this rare and kind of cool looking doll. Though if you are a collector, you can still find her on Amazon, Pinterest, and other collectible sites. Number nine. It's not just a broomstick, Harry. It's a Nimbus 2000. The Harry Potter Nimbus 2000. Huh, well, th this is perhaps the most unintentionally controversial way of keeping young fans of Harry Potter interested in Harry Potter as they grew up. The Nimbus 2000 Broomstick. The vibrating Nimbus 2000 Broomstick. Oh. This was designed as Harry Potter's first broomstick in the series, and marketed to kids aged 8 to 12. It was a battery-operated, vibrating, grooved stick and handle for kids to ride around the house. When the broomstick was placed between the legs, the vibrating was intended to simulate flying. Wow. You see, the vibrating motion was enough to attract the attention of many tween and adult Harry Potter fans. Many reports, which at first seemed innocent enough, showed that teenage girls were crazy about these. And some teens weren't even willing to share them with their siblings. Boy oh boy, they, they must really enjoy pretending to be Harry Potter alone in their room, flying on a broomstick. Shut up, Harry. I, I think I'd rather hear from a woman regarding this. Uh, Nin Hai, what did the mothers say in regards to the toys? One mother said, My daughter is a massive Harry Potter fan, so I bought her this broom. Her and her friends enjoy playing in her room with this broomstick for hours. Hmm. Another said, I bought this for my son, but his sister fights with him over it, so I had to buy her one too. Hmm, I feel like I'm missing something. Another said, even my 17 year old daughter loves this. I recommend this for all kids. Oh, now I understand. Due to YouTube's community guidelines, I will say that they were all just really big Harry Potter fans. It wasn't until later when these broomsticks were not only appearing in Toys R Us, but also local adult shops, that 
Parents clicked on what was happening. Some reviews from adults were quite interesting. What do the ladies say, hon? Some say, my only issue is the batteries drain too fast. And others say, the special effects are amazing. So I guess it's safe to say they were flying high? Yeah, yeah, good idea. Let, let's just back out now. Anyway, once Mattel got whiff of this, they called out Accio Broomstick and discontinued this unintentionally controversial but very helpful kids toy. And you know, no harm was done. At least the tweens and adults were happy. I guess we won't be seeing the title, Harry Potter and the Vibrating Broomstick on shelves anytime soon. But hey, no one was getting hurt, so who am I to judge? Once you've got hold of your broom, I want you to mount it. Uh, uh. And for number eight, Teen Talk Barbie. In case you don't already know, over the years, Barbie has been no stranger to controversy. Barbie was originally designed by her creator Ruth to be a fashion doll that inspired girls to be whatever they wanted to be. But Mattel just couldn't seem to keep this young lady out of trouble. I'd love to shop, don't you? Teen Talk Barbie was designed to be able to say four random phrases out of a total possible 270 phrases. Mine says, Wanna have a pizza party? <gasps> Mine says, You're my best friend. Uh... And now she says, Meet me at the mall. Mattel believed these phrases would best represent the teenage girls of the 90s. And once again, I'd like a lady's input. So here is my partner in crime, Nin. Hello, honey. To be fair, some of the lines Barbie said were very encouraging. Like Barbie might say, I'm going to be a doctor. Unfortunately, a lot of the phrases were a bit cliche of the 40s woman stereotype, such as, Will we ever have enough clothes? Or, Math class is tough. Or even, Let's go shopping. Don't ask me, I'm just a girl. <laughs> yeah, and not everyone was too happy about some of these phrases including the American Association of University Women. Another complainant was, of course, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Am I the only one who's a little surprised that mathematicians have their own council? Kind of cool, actually. Anyway, part of why all this kerfuffle happened was there's this very bad stereotype that's existed for many decades that women are less capable at math than men. And repeatedly feeding the phrase, math is tough, to young girls just wasn't smiled upon. But some of the dolls are programmed to say, and I quote, math class is tough. I wish they taught shopping in school. Personally, I can definitely understand that concern. But just like nowadays, there are many people on the other side that found the uproar laughable. Like this older white man and radio host. I cannot imagine a girl with a potential career at NASA throwing it all away over what a doll says. Uh, not sure if you know this man, but I don't know if many adult NASA candidates play with Barbie. I think many mothers are actually concerned with young children. While I can understand the perspective of both parties, personally, this is another subject I'd rather get a mother's perspective on. I have a second grade daughter who's uh, doing multiplication tables here in her first month of school, and the last message I want her to get is that for some reason math is any more challenging to her than any other subject that she's studying. It's easy to laugh in a person's face, but what takes real wisdom and intelligence is to be able to empathize with a person. Personally, I think if a mum says a kid repeatedly hearing gender-based stereotypical phrases might subtly affect their child's development, then I want to listen to them. But now, because they're ever so silly, let's hear more of those Barbie phrases. Meet me at the mall. Party dresses are fun. Do you have a crush on any guys? Help me make a party dress. Tell me a funny joke. Let's try out dresses. Which outfit is your favorite? The one you're wearing. I'm going to be a veterinarian. I'm going to be a journalist. Let's make some new friends. I just made one. Sorry, hun, but that was all the phrases I could find. Oh, that's fine, love. That already gives us a much better impression of what Barbie was saying. So as you might have already guessed, this whole big kerfuffle didn't go down great with Mattel, as Barbie already had a reputation for some gender stereotyping. A fun thing that the Barbie Liberation Organization did was replace Barbie's voice box with a G.I. Joe voice box, and then secretly put them back on shelves for kids to pick up. You know G.I. Joe, more the macho male stereotype. I don't know, personally I always related more to Spongebob. That hat makes you look like a girl. Am I a pretty girl? <laughs> anyway, suddenly G.I. Joe was allowed to like shopping, and Barbie was allowed to go Rambo and attack the Pilgrim tank. It was awesome. 
Finally, vengeance could be Barbies. Now you might be thinking, ah, oh, poor kids, but actually a lot of them liked it. He's in disguise. I like it because it isn't so violent. It makes it more funny. Ah, good on you, kids. Regardless, I hope Barbie keeps inspiring people in her 150 careers, including dentist, World Cup soccer competitor, and even presidential candidates. You go, girl. Trust in yourself and you can achieve anything. And for seven lucky seven, the homeless girl Gwen Thompson. So Gwen was produced by American Girl, what I can only describe as the producer of the freaky, soul-sucking monster face. I mean, to me personally, these don't look so much like dolls, but freaky monkey faces with dolls' limbs attached. But that's just my taste, I hope lots of girls enjoy these. But Gwen can't help the fact that she was designed with the eyes of an axe-wielding maniac, so let's not hold it against her. But in all serious, this company gets all my respect. You see, as well as questionable looking dolls, American Girl also produces books, including guidebooks on discussing real life issues young people may face. And as we can see here, they also address homelessness. Gwen Thompson was, in fact, the first homeless doll ever created. You see, each American doll comes with its own storyline. And in Gwen's story, she's living in a car with her mother. She was severely bullied at school as well. A bully even cut her hair off. Jeebus. Now you really look like a homeless person. <laughs> but in the story, Chrissa stands strong. A friend stands up for her against her bullying classmates. What would a bully even make fun of? Oh, you have a terrible life? Jeebus. But when the media got whiff of a homeless doll, they had questions for Mattel. Who owns American Girl? Get used to that, by the way. Mattel own a lot. When ABC News questioned a representative, they said the doll is meant to teach tolerance and promote an anti-bullying message. And I like that idea. And it's worth noting, Gwen did also get some good feedback from parents. Such as one mother saying, It shows awareness of what's going on in the world. But there was also more negative feedback. Such as one woman saying she found it Extremely disturbing and not a doll I'd ever buy for a child. Karen, really? You've upset Gwen. Well, Karen, I think you owe Gwen an apology here. Are you calling half a million homeless American people disturbing, Karen? Go sit in the corner and think about what you said. Sorry, I should talk to the manager about this. But a homeless organization did bring up a good point, which is that there's about 8,000 homeless children in LA alone, and it's doubtful any of them could afford the $95 price tag on this doll. Still, that doesn't mean that the children who could afford the doll weren't made more aware of the societal issue. Because personally, I do appreciate the baby steps of capitalism. I just think having any representation means a lot. Even if Gwen wasn't a charity doll, she still was the world's first homeless doll. American Girl responded to the kerfuffle by saying that while none of the proceeds go to charities, they've given over half a million dollars to HomeAid, a non-profit to help the homeless find housing, which is certainly very respectable. Number 6. The Foul Mouth Poe. In case you don't know, and I envy you if you don't, in the late 90s there was a thankfully short-lived series called Teletubbies. During this mercifully short boom, we had a toy line of talking teletwits. But things got strange after Poe's release, who I thought was meant to be the most innocent of the telebonnets. You see, some parents began complaining of Poe being foul-mouthed, and apparently kids were picking up his bad language. Parents were complaining they were hearing Poe say, Bite my butt! And a gay slur, which I will not repeat on this video. And some parents weren't too pleased with their kids picking up some of these very nasty phrases. But the company that made the dolls had a different story. They explained to the press that Poe is actually saying the nonsensical words, Fit it, fit it. Apparently this is actually Poe's actor, Pui Fan Lee, and she's actually saying faster faster in Cantonese. But due to all the parents' complaints, Hasbro began including language cards in each box. This way, parents could familiarize themselves with all the garbage gibberish these oversized blockheads can spout. Which does make me question, why are they teaching children meaningless garbage gibberish to begin with? That's like unteaching a small child English. It's just stupid. Anyway, my goal is to talk about this hideous stain upon humanity of a show as little as possible in this video. But just know that Poe's foul mouth was quite controversial at the time. And for number five, 
Midge, the pregnant Bobby. Meet Bobby's original best friend, or as Bobby puts it, My best old bestie! You see, Mattel have actually been creating Bobby since way back in 1959. I assume in the 50s she was made of, I don't know, asbestos or something. You see, way back in 1963, Mattel decided Bobby needed a best friend. And they called her Midge, because I guess all the decent names were copyrighted. That's not a human name. Midge is a name you give to a rambunctious poodle. For a time, all was well with Bobby and Midge. But then, Midge hooked up with some random guy named Alan. And come 1991, she got pregnant. Thus, Mattel released the Midge Happy Family line, where a suspiciously young Midge doll was pregnant. In fact, they even state that Midge was in school back in this old Midge commercial. And play tennis at school. Midge is even in some of Barbie's classes. I guess the doll could have grown up? I don't know. And when Mattel said this doll was pregnant, well, they dang well meant it. You see, Midge was carrying Nikki inside her inside her magnetic, removable womb. Who does that? Who gives a doll a magnetic, removable womb? I'm all for teaching kids about motherhood and the facts of life, but this is just kind of gross. The main controversy was that Midge was designed to be a shorter and younger looking version of Barbie. Thus, people saw Midge as a pregnant teen, which is not something many educated cultures want to be glamorizing. But, controversy or not, Mattel seemed determined to keep Midge as Barbie's best friend. So in 2013, they re-released Midge, but with no children this time, and poor Alan was out of the picture too. In fact, it's quite clear in Barbie's YouTube show that Midge is single. Va 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 voom! If things between me and Barbie don't work out, we could maybe go somewhere sometime and possibly do something. <laughs> That'd be like crazy, man! And to be fair, I really like Midge as a character. I think she and Barbie complement each other well. <gasps> You're fully articulated? I can only do this. Ah! In fact, I can comfortably say as a 33-year-old man that I was thoroughly entertained by the Barbie Dreamhouse YouTube show. Anyway, to be fair, I think Mattel had good intentions with this. As they explained on their website, the doll was intended to help young families roleplay situations, especially those expecting a new sibling. But many parents just weren't happy and were left questioning Mattel. Due to all the complaints, Walmart even stopped selling the doll altogether. So following this cavalcade of issues, pregnant Midge was eventually completely discontinued. As I said, she was later released not pregnant and with no Alan. I wasn't sure how to find a copy of what this vintage doll looked like, but fortunately Super Buddies Forever did review it on her channel. Apparently she was given it as a gift by her mother when she was pregnant with her child, so thanks. I think my mom will be thrilled to know that I'm playing with it. And for number four, Cloud Pets. Hi, this is Grandma. See you real soon. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Okay, call me a sap, but I think in theory this is a kind of cute idea. You send a message through a stuffed toy to a phone app, or vice versa. Basically, a voice message you can hug. So a parent could be working late, and they could send a quick I love you to their kids. That sounds cool. What could possibly go wrong? Well, a whole lot. Like, this was a major disaster. I mean, all I really have to do is state what this thing is. Cloud Pets was a children's toy in a private home, with a microphone connected to the internet, that uploads every voice message recorded to the Cloud Pets database. It also uploads uploads children's profile photos. So if that data is ever breached, boom! The FBI is suddenly overburdened with years of work chasing down and jailing scumbags. And wouldn't you know it, shortly after the toy's release, a data breach was discovered. Troy Hunt, an expert in internet security, explained the situation. He's also the owner of the data breach monitoring website, Have I Been Pawned? It's free. I strongly recommend checking it out. Someone has a copy of the Cloud Pets database that included Cloud Pet user information including all profile photos and recorded audio. There is no way to know how many people have had access to it. Parents need to know if they have a cloud pet, multiple parties could have access to their voice recordings. Other IT security experts also echoed similar
dollar statements. Soon, The Guardian reported that more than half a million people who had bought cloud pets had had their private information compromised. The information included emails, passwords, pictures, and more than 2 million voice recordings. In fact, Hunt reported that a ransom demand was left on the cloud pet database. But cloud pets users were never notified their private information was being held for ransom. Because apparently, nothing assures success like pretending a problem doesn't exist. When questioned about it, the cloud pet's chief executive had this to say. Were voice recordings stolen? Absolutely not. The headlines are completely false. He followed this by immediately shutting down the official contact email for cloud pets. Hmm. He doesn't fill me with confidence. And personally, I think I'm trusting the experts in application security over the CEO with a vested interest in us buying his products. Regardless, retailers very quickly began to stop selling cloud pets, Amazon and eBay included. So this cute idea became nothing more than a clumsy security breach hastily swept under the rug. And for our third most controversial toy, the Ebola virus plush toy and the you know what virus plush toy. So in case you were hiding under a rock during 2013 to 2016, I'll briefly explain what Ebola is. Ebola is a horrible disease that has killed over 10,000 people in West Africa. As Kurzgesagt explains, the virus is so bad that the body's only real defense on it is the cytokine storm, which is basically your body's immune system nuking itself and hoping you survive the process. Currently, six out of 10 infected die from Ebola. But I recommend Kurzgesagt's video if you'd like more information. Needless to say, no one was laughing about Ebola. Despite this though, an Ebola plush was released. Duh, isn't he just horrifying? Don't you just want to obliterate it and send it extinct so it never hurts another human again? I love the way the Giant Microbes website describes this plushie. Since its discovery, Ebola has become the T-Rex of microbes. And no big surprise, as news and media began to report on the African Ebola outbreak, sales of this little microbe horror skyrocketed. As Buzz60 put it, People may not want to contract Ebola, but they're lining up to cuddle it. Some people at the time thought this plush was in bad taste, but personally, I think it did more good than harm, because the plushie was designed as a teaching tool. Plus, the seller donated a portion of all proceeds to the Ebola crisis organizations. <sighs> and if you're here with me in the years after 2020, you might be wondering, did they stop there? Or did they actually do a plush of the even more recent global plague? You bet your smudge screen they did. I think it's right there. I present you with, well, this. In fact, they really went the extra mile and gave us a plush of the even more recent variant. They even come in a sister three pack. Well, isn't that just considerate? But again, a very thoughtful description is given, including a reminder to stay calm, learn the facts from doctors, and get vaccinated, as well as an educational pamphlet about the viruses. These were more marketed as a memorable way to remind loved ones to stay healthy. Yeah, maybe it was in poor taste, but I think this is an example of using capitalism for more than just profit. Sales were also used to inform people and do a little good at the same time. And personally, that's something I can respect. Number 2 The LOL Surprise Dolls Do you remember LOL dolls? I'm trying not to, but in case you've forgotten, here's a quick refresher. After their success with Bratz, MGA was hungry for a new popular doll. So they came up with the LOL Surprise Dolls, which stands for Little Outrageous Littles. And I'm aware you learning that added absolutely nothing to your education and wisdom of the universe. I apologize. But honestly, I can see the similarities between their former Bratz dolls and their LOL dolls. Particularly when I see designs like this. They're essentially miniaturized brats with much bigger eyes. So where's the fire, you might be asking? Well, in this case, let's not douse that fire in water. <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> Never mind. You see, parents discovered a secret controversy. The controversy was truly revealed when they dipped these dolls in water. Perhaps you could call this a surprise controversy. <laughs> uh. In fact, some parents were demanding there be a recall after they discovered the horrible truth. Because it turns out these dolls were secretly wearing ugh, adult underwear and bondage? She also has this weird, weird, so weird outfit on. It's this pink underwear. It literally says one bad BB. Just why? It's a little devil 
tail. The devil tail, honestly, I'm okay with. You choose whatever religion you want, but ugh, leather straps, fishnet stockings, why? Ugh, thank you though to Hillary for pointing these out to me. I think what puzzled parents is why would anyone be manufacturing kids' dolls to look like this? Twitter wasn't happy either, with one mum even saying the dolls should be banned completely. Some parents even thought the dolls were exploiting children for entertainment. I don't know if that was MGA's intention, but they kept their response pretty simple. <laughs> Thank you for your feedback. We will consider parents' feedback into doll production in the future. Oh, good. Well, clearly that settled that then. It was later reported by a lot of concerned parents on TikTok that the doll was discontinued. I don't know, Bratz plus the LOL dolls are some of my least favourite of all these dolls, so the less I see of them, the happier I am. Number 1 Video Girl Barbie Ooh, back to Barbie. What controversy have you got for us now? Take that! Oh, oh dear. You know when we start getting warnings from the FBI, Barbie's really screwed up this time. I can see it now. FBI Special Agent Team Barbie. But first up, let me explain what Video Girl Barbie actually is. She's basically a fully functional video camera with a color LCD screen, plus a USB port to upload to your PC. And honestly, the user feedback I could find was actually pretty good. At least from what I could glimpse of the old owners of these dolls. Caitlin here seemed to like it just fine. Even Gadget Guy seemed to enjoy her. She even comes with free editing software. A Barbie version of Premiere, if you will. She doesn't have a hot shoe, but she sure does have some hot shoes. Talk about your power thighs. The camera runs on two AAA batteries stored in Barbie's legs. And I gotta say, what a cool design idea putting the batteries in Barbie's legs. So how did the FBI get involved with Barbie? Well, when the FBI discovered this new Barbie, they sent a secret alert to police agencies. Because this child's doll could be used as a secret camera, they wanted them to know that Barbie could be holding useful evidence for court. Objection! Your Honor, Barbie would like to take the stand to testify. Clearly though, this secret message was not very secret because this somehow got leaked to the media. No surprise, the media was quickly whipped into a frenzy over the pervert side of this story, though I'm happy to say that there were no actual reports of Barbie being linked to any criminal cases. Barbie's name has been cleared. Mattel, no surprise, also responded to the media frenzy. They had this to say. The FBI is not reporting that anything has happened with Barbie. Steve from the FBI Sacramento field office has confirmed there have been no incidents of Barbie being involved in any criminal cases. Mattel products are designed with children and their best interests in mind. Power blow. Everything else is child's play. Many Mattel employees are parents themselves and we understand the importance of child safety. It is our number one priority. And frankly, that's a relief to hear. But by 2012, Video Girl Barbie had been completely discontinued. And that's a shame, because I always like to encourage kids to get creative. And with that, we've reached the end of our journey through these toys and some of the controversies they've spiked. And if you've got a video idea, want to give your thoughts on some of these controversies, or just say hi, I always welcome hearing from you in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Black Canary Barbie was recalled from sales, recalled from shell. After a rapid decline in sales and interest, Black Canary Car- Damn it! After a rapid decline in sales and interest, Black Canary Car- <coughs>